Watching World Championships Bantamweight Kickboxing World Champion Jonathan Haggerty is insanely fun for me. As someone who analyzes movement daily, his efficiency always astounds me, particularly his push kick. So in this video, we'll be breaking down some of the anatomy behind what makes Jonathan Haggerty's push kick so effective. All right, guys, so as promised, we're going to do two views of Haggerty's push kick, teep, front kick, whatever you want to call it. But in this view, we're going to be focused on really two things. The difference between the, the mechanics or some of the biomechanics of the leg that's planted on the ground and then some of the biomechanics of the leg that's doing the actual kicking, so the foot not planted on the ground. So shift your attention to the right leg because that's the one that's planted on the ground. So whenever he comes forward, he's doing something called triple extension or something that's colloquially called triple extension at the ankle, the knee, and the hip. All right, so I'm going to move my cursor over here because if I try to hover over the ankle, it's not going to allow me to, the bar will come up. So you can see that he's up on his toe here. That's ankle plantar flexion for muscles like the gastroc and the soleus and the calf. We then have knee extension for muscles like the quads. And then we have hip extension, which we'll be able to see a little bit better in the next view on the leg that's planted. So we've got plantar flexion, which is also ankle extension. I know that's a little confusing. Knee extension and hip extension. Okay, so that's happening in the closed chain with the foot planted or with the foot planted on the ground is what that means. And that just means there's a little bit of a different neural, neural motor, motor neuro pattern, however you want to say it, uh, that, that's happening there to coordinate that movement. Okay, so now let's switch over to the other side. So essentially what's happening is he's doing the same thing. He's extending his hip knee and ankle, but it's after he flexes them. Okay, so right now he's in a position of, he's, he's flexing his hip with muscles like the, the psoas and the TFL and the rectus femoris. He's also flexing his knee with muscles like the hamstrings. And then he's dorsiflexing, it's very hard to see since it's a very quick movement, but he's dorsiflexing his ankle with muscles like the anterior tibialis uh, and then extensor digitorum. So we've got a pattern of flexion, which we'll talk about in the next view. And then we've got a pattern of triple extension, but just in the open chain. So when he makes contact here, this is a really good view. So even though his hip is relatively flexed, it did go from a position of flexion to extension. So he is extending his hip, extending his knee, and extending or plantar flexing his foot or ankle uh, at, at the same time, really quickly. So, and we'll talk about that switch here in a second. So this is a very good example of how the foot that's planted on the ground in the closed chain can be performing some of the same movements at the joint as the open chain, but they look different because one is planted on the ground, one, the distal extremity is fixed on a certain part of the environment like the ground, and then the other, the distal part of the extremity or the part away from the spine is moving. Okay, so that gives us a really good example of that. And in the next view, we're going to look at a couple of different things that are very, very interesting. Okay, so in the last view, we looked at the difference between what's happening in the closed chain or the leg planted on the ground and the open chain or the leg that's kicking. Okay, so for this one, we're going to look at something that's pretty interesting, I think, and that's called synergies. Okay, synergies are just kind of patterns of movement in the body that occur in muscles that have similar insertion points and innervations. Okay, so for example, we're, we're going to break this down, but I want you to notice how flexed his trunk is here. So his, his trunk is kind of like hunched down, and then while he is cooking, his spine is extended. And we're gonna see this kind of show and walk through how this is happening from the top of the back all the way down into the ankle. All right, so what synergy, what a synergy would suggest is that the trunk is flexing, the hip is flexing, the knee is flexing, and the ankle is flexing, followed by a really quick extension pattern. So this is not just happening in the leg like we said before. So if we come all the way back, we can see that his trunk is flexed, his pelvis is tucked under that posterior pelvic tilt. So so watch watch his the top of his shorts here. Whenever he comes forward, you can see that pelvis is tilting under him. So that's called a posterior pelvic tilt. Okay, so he's got flexion at the thoracic and lumbar spine and at the lumbopelvic spine at the pelvis. And then he's flexing at the hip, he's flexing at the knee, and he's flexing at the ankle. So then this is followed by a quick, rapid extension of all of those same joints. So he's extending kind of at the thoracic spine, but really not. Uh, the thoracolumbar spine, definitely. And then the lumbopelvic spine is definitely extending. We've also got the hip that's going from flexion to extension. The knee is 
perfectly extended, and then we've got the ankle that's plantar flexing or extended at the same time. So this may be because the body does something, it kind of organizes based off of what's happening in the environment to promote efficiency. Uh, or, you know, some people argue that these are just things that the body does innately. So they, they may require some really low level of neural input. Uh, but I just wanted to see, I wanted you to show that that's, this is what people see when they argue for the existence of synergies. I don't know that it's necessarily something that is argued that they exist, but how they happen and why they happen uh, is, is still debated. But really good view of a flexion synergy followed by an extension synergy uh, in a sporting environment. So all of this to say that Haggerty just does a very good job of controlling his body um, and just reacting to the environment in a way that's very, very efficient.